classical music is boring. <laughs> I really just said that. <clears throat> this is kind of like telling a small child that uh, there's no such thing as Santa Claus. It's okay to think, it's just not okay to say these things out loud. You know, these pieces, they're so long, and they hardly have any lyrics most of the time. <laughs> it's kind of sometimes tricky to know quite what to think, what to feel, what to experience, what the experience is supposed to be. And I want to talk about what the experience is supposed to be. But first, I want to talk about this word boring. I want to reframe the definition, and I want to make boring great again. Boring speaks to craft. It speaks to craftsmanship. It speaks to long, laborious tasks that are often repetitive, but have great payoff if only the craftsman has the time to see it through to the end. I think of carpentry with this tool. I think of uh, metalwork. You think of the bore of a firearm, the bore of uh, the brass instruments that you'll see join me on stage in just a few moments. Shows up in lots of other places, too, when we think about scale, when we think about time scale, the, the time it takes to get, get these projects underway. This man is no stranger to boring time scales. He's uh, founded Tesla, SpaceX, PayPal, the list goes on. He has a new company he's working on that's, going to that's trying to develop a vacuum tube underground, a tunnel that will extend all the way from New York to DC and make it possible to travel between the two cities in less than 30 minutes, if complete. This would revolutionize the I-95 corridor, and, and it would transform the East Coast economy. And of course, the name of this company is The Boring Company. <laughs> These projects ha don't have to be quite so on the nose with the concept of uh, digging tunnels. It could be just about anything. We're in the 10th year anniversary now of the iPhone. With them coming out every single year, it's very easy to forget that the first iPhone took four years of uh, intense development, and that, of course, was buttressed by 10 years of some of the core technologies like the touchscreen being developed. And that rests on another 60 years of high-tech innovation that leads to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular, AI. The list goes on. So it's not going to be a shock to this room that persistence pays off. So the best, the biggest ideas end up taking these big, boring time scales to get the job done. And it just so happens that classical music is a perfect vehicle for the best ideas. It happens in three ways. The first phase is the composition process. Now, first off, let's talk about these composers. We tend to think of composers in popular imagination as these free spirits, these artists, these people who have tapped into something special that the rest of us don't have. This is only half true. They do tap into something special, but it's something special that we all have. Research consistently shows us that we have an innate capacity for self-expression. Composers have turned their craft, their craftsmanship, their expertise with the orchestra, say, into a skill they've harnessed their creativity with to go on to create the durable works of art that we all appreciate. This happens at a, not an incremental but an exponential time scale, where a one-minute piece might be something a composer could literally dash off overnight, a two or three minute piece might take a week or longer, four or five minutes, and we're talking about a month, and 10, 15, or 20 minute long pieces of music, and now we could be talking on a scale of years or even longer in some cases. Boring time scales. The second phase is that of the performers. That's where I come in. That's where my colleagues will come in in just a moment. The time scale at this point shifts a little bit in rehearsals. These things take anywhere from four to 20 times the length of the piece of music itself to prepare. So even a very short piece could end up taking many hours to prepare. Boring time scales. The third phase, that's where you come in, the listener, the audience. Now, in this age of tweets and sound bites and two and a half minute long songs on the radio, You'd be forgiven for thinking that ideas just uniformly can be condensed down into this tiny little format. This is not so. Some things take longer. Some things take longer to create and longer to consume. Take candy. Always a crowd pleaser. Sometimes you want a piece of candy, and that's great. Sometimes you're ready for a nice, rich, delicious piece of chocolate cake. Sometimes you want a can of soda. Soda's great, 
But sometimes what you really want is a robust, full-bodied glass of red wine. <laughs> I think some of you might want one right about now. <laughs> so today we're going to do some. Uh, we're going to enjoy some musical red wine. We're going to perform for you in just a moment. My group, Symphony Number no. One, and I. We're going to perform for you a, a brand new piece of music. This piece is written just for you. It's a world premiere for the TED audience today. It's bespoke. It's couture. It's customized for this audience, <laughs> this day, at this time. Now, there's something to be said for durable works of art that have uh, sustained interest for centuries. But there's also something to be said for living in the now, living with a composer who lives the same experiences we are and who watches the same news headlines that we do. Ben Goldberg is here with us today, and he's composed for us a piece. It's seven minutes long. It's called Catalyst. It has no program, which means it has no specific external narrative meaning outside of the music. That leaves you free to think and feel about the music as you so choose. Now, I want to back up for a second. Thanks to a certain book, we have this general popular idea that classical music is something like, uh, like audio broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's musical vitamins, take two Mozarts, and in the morning you're going to invent the next Facebook. <laughs> this is how it's supposed to work. This is false. Classical music is not merely a way to stimulate some other kind of great idea in a different domain. Classical music is the vehicle for those big ideas. They're right there in the music. You get to hear them. Now, to return to this idea of experience, you are free to experience the music any way you wish. And that's exactly how you should experience it. Anger, sadness, intrigue, indifference, they're all on the menu. You can select any one of them. All you have to do is open yourself to the experience that the music has for you. So we're now going to perform for you Ben Goldberg's Catalyst. And I'll just leave you again. The best ideas in life require boring time scales. And that classical music is a perfect vehicle for the best ideas. Thanks. <laughs> 